Hey, what's up, Steven? Hey, how's it going, Ian? I'm good, man. Sorry I'm late. I just was in, an, I was in a Zoom uh, meeting. Sorry I'm uh, a few minutes late. Oh, hey, no worries at all. Glad you could make it. Um, oh, and by the way, it's Stefan. I know that I spell my name like Stephen, but I was gonna say that I was gonna say Stefan, but I felt confident with Stephen, so I went with it. But life is about gambles, you know. There you go. Exactly. You miss fifty percent of the Stephens you don't take. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, hey. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to edit this part out, but just wanted to give you a little bit of Look, run of I show. I was doing it. I, keep this in. This is, uh, this oh, is my oh. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll keep that part in. That that was gold. But then we'll uh, edit this little part out with the run of show. But okay. I'll introduce or do like the formal introduction. Introduce right. me, the show, my yeah. special guest, you. And then we'll talk a little bit about you, your recent appearance on Entre Nos. On, yeah. I hate saying it like that. What's, can I do an That's accent? how you say it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's actually right. Stefan. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to have to keep this in now. Uh, and then, and then um, we will get into the advice. So the fans have sent in questions. So we'll answer those. They're silly questions found on the internet. So you can, if you want to be serious, we can be serious about it put our psychologist hats on but if you want to be silly we can also be silly so, sounds great awesome dude you can curse as well and you can plug anything you want at any time so okay great thank you man awesome all right uh, uh, uh. stefan 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 hello <laughs> everybody and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice a podcast my name is stefan and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest. He's appeared on The Late Show with Jimmy Kimmel as a regular at the iconic Comedy Cellar, and he most recently appeared on HBO's Entre Nos. And he's got the prettiest eyebrows I've ever laid eyes on. Everybody, please ah. welcome Ian Lara. What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I just have to, it's actually the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. I don't want to be, oh, dude. I don't you know. be sued by Kimmel. Like, hey, that guy was never on my show, you know? But uh, I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, dude. You know what? I did that on purpose just because you did the Steven and the Stefan. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, to... yeah. He was setting me up for this. Great. Thank you. I wanted, I wanted to make you feel more comfortable. But welcome to the show. It's awesome to have you on. I also have to say that you have become one of my favorite comedians. Because... Oh, wow. Thank you, man. That means so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you saying that. I shouldn't interrupt. Continue because I want to hear more about this. <laughs> no, yeah, there's more compliment coming, more coming. But I actually, I had you on my list of people to ask to be a guest. I usually like to wait until they've got something that they want to promote or plug. So I'm not just like, hey, I like you. You want to come on my podcast? So I first heard of you from a friend that tagged me on one of your videos where you were at the comedy cellar, you were doing one of your bits about how you speak Spanish fluently and uh, people don't know that. So then okay. there'll, be, there'll be people that talk shit and then you end up speaking back to them in Spanish and they're like, oh wait, I, I don't speak any Spanish. Yeah. So I thought that was absolutely hilarious because I'm actually Brazilian. So people don't know that I speak Portuguese fluently. And so they'll talk shit about me. And then when I respond to them back, they get a little surprised. So yeah, it, yeah, man. Uh, I, first of all, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thanks to your friend for sharing my, uh, sharing my video. Uh, I, I, I actually, I didn't, you know, you, as a comedian, you write these jokes and you think that, you know, you're kind of just writing from your perspective, your point of view, stuff that happens. But then when it gets put out there by whatever, like if you could, if you're lucky enough to get a push by any type of like major thing, like Comedy Central, that was for Comedy Central, put it out there. Yeah. And you meet so many people that could relate and they're like, wait a minute, that happens to me too. And you kind of just think that it's just something that you go through, but everyone's like, no, that, that, that's me. That happens to me, you know, and you don't, it doesn't have to be Hispanic. It'd be like you said, Portuguese, or I'm sure there's Chinese, you know, whatever language it is. It's uh, yeah. it, it it brings me happiness to know that other people could relate to it, you know. Yeah, no, it, it was really cool, and it's um, I mean, throughout that was the first when I started hearing your comedy, and then I started listening to more and more, and then as I started to do research for the podcast, I mean, dude, you have been grinding for what eight and a half years now, doing comedy, 
it feels like you've got it down to this science where I watched your special on HBO, Entre Nos, yeah. and all the other clips you have online. It's just like you are, you are able to lead people to punchlines so quickly. It's almost like a slaughterhouse, dude. The cows don't even know what's happening. And then you've got twist, laugh, and people are just cracking up. Like, um, I was going to say, thank you, man. You know, as comedians, we're, we're dark, sad people. So it feels good. To, it's, it feels good to hear this, man. <laughs> I'm doing no, this podcast every week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But no, seriously. I mean, I think there was one example. It wasn't on entry notes, but it was on another clip that you had shared where you were talking about how your mom doesn't speak English and she's oh, been in this country for a very long time. And you're like, that's years, not. Yeah. That's, that's a skill. Like you gotta be skilled to not learn English. And then you start turning and oh my, it's like this fucking twist and turn Valley where you're like, well, you know, if I was going to live in a country, I'm too new. I'm bringing the New York with me. I'm not yeah. going taking it anywhere. And then you're like, you bring an example and I'm not going to spoil it because it's so fucking funny and I will ruin it. But yeah, about- I actually I just posted that one. I had done that for comedy. Central. I just posted it on my Instagram yesterday and it's, you know, people showing definitely a lot of love to it. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate, you know, I spent like this afternoon, like I, I spent like all afternoon, I've been trying to like write for like four hours. I've been writing, trying to like, and people think like when you say like, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I wrote for four hours today. I wrote for five hours. People think like you're just sitting there with a notebook writing for five hours. And that's not what writing is for me. Like, I, of course, I'm sitting there with a notebook or my computer trying to come up with jokes, but I, I, I pace and I, and I put on stand up to get my mind in, in like a funny place. Um, but I appreciate it because some of these bits, you know, it takes so long for you to get them to where they are when everyone sees them. And people think that you just think of them like that, you know, like just like that. And like as soon as like I, I'll show people, like I have a substantial amount of material out there. Like I have, I have a six minute clip on Comedy Central, the first one I did. I have six minutes on the Tonight Show. I have. 11 minutes, another one on Comedy Central, and then I have 15 for HBO. That's a lot of material out there, Dude. but like, I still get DMs like, put out more, put out more. And I'm like, this is a lot of stuff that I'm, that I'm, you know? And I'd like to think that most of, I mean, most if not all of the stuff that I put out there, like I don't, I try not to have like fluff in it. Like, so it's like bit after bit, like I'm giving you my best bits. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. holding back great bits that I have for like, for you know whatever like i'm trying to give you my best bit if you watch my comedy central the recent one for that came out though this week at the seller clip it's yeah. like 11 minutes and that's like me just at a club but that's like me doing my stuff like i'm doing my best stuff you know my just, you know i'm trying to i'm trying to bring it but yeah man i i appreciate that because developing you know trying to develop material it's not easy it's not like a, a easy thing i love it obviously it's what i like to do but it's it's uh it's a lot of like scratching your head of like you trying to find an angle. I actually remember when I came up with that joke, like I actually came up with the um that joke about my mom speaking not speaking uh English. I was I was it's funny because you'll sit down for five hours trying to write and come up with nothing. And then I mm-hmm. remember I was just in my car and then I, I, I had the idea of her not speaking English, but then I, I I I came up with the thing where it was like I didn't have the angle of like why do we expect that from immigrants? Like we're not adapting to Americans don't adapt to anything. Like we, I started thinking like when, when you see an America, when you see an American in Europe, they don't adapt to European cultures. They're always trying to like bring America back. So wouldn't it make sense that an immigrant who moves here keeps that, isn't that the most American thing to do? Like, then I was like, oh, that's when like a light bulb went in. I was like, yeah, I'm a New Yorker. Like I'll bring New York everywhere. And that's when I, when I had that bit, when I developed that bit. But it's funny how like they come to you. That's really interesting because I was thinking the same thing when, and I was wondering how it happened with you and how, how sometimes it comes to you at, at different times. Because when I try and write, and this is really weird, but one of the most useful books that I ever read was yeah. about math. And it, it, I'm, I suck at math. So I don't even remember why I bought it, but maybe because I suck at math. So I was reading it and they were saying that sometimes equations and and formulas can get so complex if you're doing really difficult calculus or whatever the best thing to do is just step away kind of like you were saying go and pace listen yeah. to other stuff and your mind will continue working on the problem in the background 
And so it's really interesting to me to hear about the process with you. And then sometimes it happens with me. And I think a lot of people shower, shower thoughts where you're like, oh shit, I just thought of something where, um, it it happens almost when you don't intend it to, when you're not focusing on it. So I've been meaning to buy like a a little pocket notebook because sometimes uh, luckily I'm in quarantine. Well, semi luckily, because I can just go to my notebook upstairs, but I, I feel like, um, sometimes things hit me or ideas hit me when I least expect it. And it sounds like that kind of happens with you too. Same. Yeah. Same. I mean, right now I'm in like, I'm in like writing mode. So like I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to pretend sometimes you hear comedians talk about like, I write every single day and you're like, Whoa, that's like, that sounds like a lot, but I, uh, I don't write every single day, but I'm in writing mode right now where I'm trying to have like all this, new stuff that I'm trying to tighten up and like, you know, performing it around, it's getting laughs, but it's not where I want it to be. So trying to mm-hmm. tighten it up. Cause I was like, as like you mentioned, um, uh, there's different like form of like comedians and I not, I don't disparage any form, different people do it different ways, but I like, like, I just generally, I like to have that like constant pace of laughter, like constant, like I'm, I'm more of a punchline comic, not that I'm set up punch, but like it's, it's a lot of punchlines and then tag, 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 you know, to keep the mm-hmm. laugh rolling. So when you like material like that, it's tough to develop. Like you don't just develop that. Like I can't just take an idea on stage and start to get, you know, make it great. Like some comics can who are yeah. great at it. Like I kind of have to write it out and have the blueprint and then I could take it on stage and help it develop. And back before quarantine, I mean, I was doing so many set, uh, spots and I'm, I'm a comic that'll like, I'll run it to the ground. Like I'll keep, doing it keep doing it keep you keep doing it you start adding tags you start like expanding it and that's how i would go so now it's very tough because i mean back then i was doing 30 to 40 spots a week you know just in the city just hopping from club to club 30 40 spots a week and now if i get if i do 20 in a month it's a lot jesus dude and i was also i think i heard on a podcast how you were saying too you kind of built up this I don't want to call it immunity, but you've built up this toughness a little bit by working Broadway and doing shows where there were like three people and you were starting the show. And, and, and yeah. so it just, it wasn't either a lot of, it wasn't a lot of people or the people were just mean. And uh, so it kind yeah. of, and I'm sure in New York, there can be tourists or assholes yeah. or whatever. So there's like a huge diversity and range of people. And I yeah. wanted to ask, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say 100%. Yeah, like, you know, like, I, I was lucky enough. I, I, I'm, I'm from New York. So this is where I started my stand up, you know. And when yeah. you start stand up in New York, obviously, your dream is to be working the A clubs. And I've been lucky enough now where to be a regular at like the Comedy Cellar and the Stand Comedy mm-hmm. Club. And those are great. I mean, the stand's been been um, rocking with me for a long time. I, I recently got into the Comedy Cellar and I love, those are the best places absolutely in New York City to perform. But clubs like Broadway Comedy Club, like they really allowed me to like grow. Like broad, I, I got my Tonight Show set. The t- I take my submission for the Tonight Show at Broadway Comedy Club. I take my submission for HBO at Broadway Comedy Club and I got them both hey. off one tape that I taped there. So they really allowed me like that as, like that club, it, it, it has a thing where like, nobody cares about nothing. <laughs> so like it's, like, it's like a lot of negatives about that, but it's the positive because the, I mean, pre-quarantine, they were, they would, they would do 300 people in that, in that downstairs showroom, you know, three shows, wow. 300 people each. So I would get three, four spots there in a night. I went from like being basically getting these late night you know, free spots to like being one of the guys at Broadway where I was working there every time I was in town. So they gave me a lot of opportunity. I think it's important for comics, like find that club that allows you to grow. By the time I got into the comedy cellar, like I, like I, to, to a lot of people, the cellar, and as it should, it's like this big thing where like so many greats perform, but I had done so many terrible shows at Broadway already that when I got to the comedy cellar, I was like, wait a minute, they put their phones away and security makes them listen to you? <laughs> this is going to be a piece of cake. Like, are you kidding me? This is all I've ever dreamed of, you know? So I had that, yeah. kind of, like, that kind of attitude where I felt okay. I wasn't like super nervous or scared to perform there as I would have been previously if I would have gotten in like earlier, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I remember hearing you on a different podcast saying that 
people were telling you, because all these great things were happening. You got that, that, that spot on uh, Jimmy Fallon, not Jimmy Kimmel. And, um, you know, things were happening and people were like, go, go get, get on the cellar. And you were like, I need to kind of brush everything up first, get in a steady spot and, and go in. And I heard, I mean, you can fill in the blanks here, but you, you did the audition. SD, you didn't even speak with SD. She didn't speak with you. She just, you got the text in North Carolina or something. And she was like, they're like, Myrtle Beach. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I I mean, uh, yeah, because Mark Norman, he helped me out a lot. Like Mark Norman, I met Mark when I was like three years in at the stand. That was the first club that really allowed me to perform. They used to let me host there a lot when I was a younger comic. And I met Norman there. He's helped me. Mark has helped me more than like anything. Like he helped me. Really? Fallon, yeah, he he introduced me to, like to Fallon. He was the one that recommended me to them. He helped me get into the comedy cellar. He recommended me to them. But at that point, um, I had already done the Tonight Show. Um, after I, I, I already, and when you do the Tonight Show, the cellar is one of the clubs they take you to when a, like the producer flies in from LA. Uh. They take you around town running the set. So they had already took me to the cellar. So even though I didn't hang out at the cellar because I was never one of the guys to hang out at a club that I'm not working. Like I'll hang yeah. out. If working but i'm not just gonna go hang out i'd rather just be yeah. abroad doing stand-up than hanging out nice not not working so i had already had that confidence because when you come in with the producers from the tonight show and they're like hey he's doing the tonight show tomorrow he has to go up next kind of gives you a certain confidence you know to perform yeah. so i was just yeah I, I remember i auditioned like again i wasn't like terribly nervous i was like at that point i was like this is it i do stand up every night i have these jokes i'm gonna do the jokes and my audition, it wasn't in the traditional cellar. It was at the um, Fat Black, which is a notoriously tough room. Notoriously yeah. tough room. And I did it and it didn't go great. Like I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't have like an extremely hot set, but I handled it like a pro. Like I, I you know, nice. I, stood in there, I stood in there, like some stuff wasn't hitting like that. And I kind of took it on the chest and acted like a professional comic would, which I feel like that's the difference between like, a seasoned comic and an open mic or sometimes open mic like if stuff don't go well you kind of melt into your own body but i've seen the greats yeah. like, stuff isn't going well they stand there and kind of take it on their chest and that's what i did and i got a couple of laughs and then i i left and i nobody said anything to me i, I went home this was like on a tuesday i went home i didn't hear nothing from no one mark didn't say nothing uh liz from the seller didn't say nothing then on Friday, I was I was on the road. I was in Myrtle Beach, and on Friday, I got the text was like, "Hey, send all your information. Congratulations, you've been passed." And actually, I got yeah. passed. I did like a week of spots, and they were going amazing. Like I was in love with this place. I was like, because like yeah. I said, like, for a comedian, the best part is you, the audience is forced to listen to you. So if you have jokes, like this is the best case scenario. If you're one of those people that needs like the crowd to be crazy so you can make fun of them and think this is not yeah. the best place because they're not going to do that and they're not going to allow that. But I remember the first time I actually, I got booked to do a brunch show and then I showed up and this was like a week and a half, two weeks maybe after I've been working the cellar and yeah. SD was there and it was the first time I actually one-on-one met SD. I was like, hey SD, uh, I'm Ian, like, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Like, you don't understand. I mean, I'm sure you understand, but like, this has been like a dream come true to perform here. And then yeah. she, was, she was like, oh, I, I, she was like, I know how, who you are. How do you think I, how do you think you got here? And I was like, yeah, I know, but I was like, I know, but we never formed with man. She's like, no, she's like, no, no, I heard some good things about you. Uh, I'm going to go downstairs and, and, and watch. And I'm like, no, 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 Esty, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to. I'm like, no, I'm already in. <laughs> I'm already in. Just, just have brunch. Don't worry about it. You don't got in my head, obviously. I'm like, you don't have to, because if I'm like a brunch show, like you don't even know what's down there during a brunch show. Oh yeah. You don't know God. what type of audience is in there, or if it's even audience. It could be ten people down there, you know, for a yeah. brunch show. So now I'm in my head. I'm like, also like, you could have just went down and didn't tell me and let me do my thing, you know. <laughs> So I went, so again, she's like, all right, you're next. They, they come up to me, he's like, Ian, you're next. I'm like, all right, I see Esty get up. She, she walks downstairs as she said she would to watch oh, me. And shit. again, like, again, I always kind of take control of my, uh, my nerves. I'm always able to like, you know, I, it kind of, I kind of mentioned it in the, um, in the HBO thing when in the interview, where yeah. I'm like, this is just jokes in front of people. Like I've performed yeah. at the comedy store. I've performed at the cellar. I've performed at Broadway. You're just telling jokes in front of people. So if your jokes work in one place, they generally should work everywhere you know like it's just yeah yeah so i had that mentality and i went up there and i had a great like set it was like way better than my audition set great set 15 minute set nice and as we watched the whole thing and then after she came up to me she's like hey great job and 
since then, like I was getting like a ton of spots. Yeah, I was getting like five to 10 spots a week, which I was like, this is my dream. This is everything I've ever wanted. And you know, then somebody ate a bat in China and now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> somebody ate a bat. Oh God, that's the best way to, to articulate the genesis of coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And for, I don't know if all the listeners know, but Esty is the booker of the Comedy Cellar and she is um, tough, I guess. She's a, a tough judge and it's it's extremely hard to get in the Comedy Cellar. It's like, you, you don't get in by knowing somebody or anything like that. Like you have to be talented to be in the Comedy Store, from what yeah. I understand. People, people say that. I, I haven't had that experience. She was always great to me. She was always like, okay. all the experiences that I've had, she was always super nice to me. And I never had that like um, tough experience with her. But also like, I think people's experience is going to be different no matter what. Because as you yeah. mentioned, like I'm a joke guy. Like I have, yeah. I know, I know comedically that sounds a weird thing for a comedian to say, but like I have like jokes, like these are just jokes, one joke after other, you know? So generally speaking like people are gonna even when you don't do well like bookers whoever they're okay with it because they're like i see you're telling jokes you know you're not yelling at the audience you're not turning on the audience you're not telling these big drawn out stories the people who are good at it are great at it i'm not taking nothing away from them but that's not mm. what i do so like i think that bookers appreciate that like that's why like uh generally and all the clubs that i'm past like the stand uh uh broadway I, they will either put me i either go first or or last like that's that's the only like i've nice. never been a guy who got like good like that sweet third fourth spot um i would go first or last you know which Dang. you know it's it's a compliment but it's tough because you know first yeah it's, tough. it's a tough spot i've had a, you know you have tough times but they know that even if i bomb they're okay with that you're just going to tell jokes and it'll help the rest of the show that the first comic is just telling jokes, you know, it kind of sets the audience up like, all right, yeah. we're here to tell jokes. This is what it's going to be. Jesus. Dude. That's like putting the, you're the soldier on the front line. It's like, we know he's going to do good. He's going to kill, but, um, or not, or he might die or he might yeah. die, but it's going to help the rest of the platoon. <laughs> 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 we're gonna set him out there he might take a couple bullets and die but these got these next guys they're gonna know what you know they're, they're gonna be better which is what it is oh, fuck. i can't you know there's been times where i have been frustrated with that but i always remind myself like one that's a compliment and two i mean things have been going pretty good so you can't you know get yeah. get too into your head about it yeah yeah no that, that's really good and i was gonna say too i think i had heard you speak about this on another pod i listened to a lot of podcasts that you were on and you were saying one of the things that you try to do as well that you challenge yourself to do is to get sillier and sillier with things and with your jokes and i feel like you as i was listening to your comedy post hearing that i think you just fucking nail it dude and it ties in with the sillier it gets on the next tag it just gets funnier and funnier. Like where you were talking about when you went on a cruise yeah, with your guy friend. Yeah. And then you talk about like, it's, it's not all singles. It's like all couples. And then you talk, get a little sillier on, oh yeah, I mean, you see everybody wearing matching outfits. So we have to wear matching outfits because we don't want to ruin anyone's photo. And then you get into the fights and then <laughs> the reasoning for why you don't want him to, to eat bad stuff. And it's just gets sillier and sillier but like funnier and funnier and funnier and so it's yeah awesome. i mean yeah that's definitely because like i said like I, I i think i'm old school in that aspect of comedy like i still believe in comedy being comedic you know like i i i don't care about your point of views or your you know like i do care about your point of view i don't care about like your social views or your political view, whatever it is like as long as yeah. it's fun like norm mcdonald is one of my favorite comics like for me he's like top five yeah. and one of the main things that i love about him like if you watch his special, a lot of it is like about nothing. Like it's just yes. a lot of like silliness, just thoughts. And a lot of times people will ask com comedians like, hey, is that story true? Like, was that true or did you make that up? Like as if you made it up is worse than it being true. I'm like, if it's yeah. true, if it's true, that's easy. Anyone could just retell a true story, but making some shit up out of nowhere. Like, do you know how difficult that is? Like to make up like just a funny story with punches and people actually believe that it happened like 
that's difficult. And comedians will never admit this, but you know, 90% of it didn't happen how we told it. Oh, but yeah. the ability yeah. to create that picture in, in people's mind, like I think that's the real talent. So I always challenge myself when sometimes I feel like if, if you know, these jokes are too heavy, I'm like, get it, get it sillier, get it sillier. Like even the joke about like, about my mom. Like when I first started doing that joke, sometimes, especially in like these, these red places that I used to go, people would yeah. think that I was being too, like people would think, like I would say, I would say uh, there's part of the joke where I say, where I say, um, they say, if you're going to move to this country, you got to learn our language and adapt to our culture. That's a line I say. I say we say that, Americans. And, yeah. and some of these red places, people used to yell out, hell yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I'm like, hold on. I'm not doing a political speech. Like, I'm going to talk about masturbation at the end of this joke. If you just ride <laughs> with me. Like, if you just ride with me, I'm going to masturbation. So, so just <laughs> go with me. You know, like, I don't, I don't never yeah. want it to get too heavy. My same thing with the yeah. joke about, I have a joke about gender pronouns. I don't know if you if you've seen that. Yes. So I talk about uh, I talk about I've said that joke and on the setup, people are like, "Whoa, where is he going?" Like he's talking about calling people. Could, is this safe? And I'm like, again, hold on. I'm going to a homeless guy with his dick out on a bus. If you ride with me, <laughs> this is where the joke is going. <laughs> so don't think that I'm up here trying to preach or whatever. I'm just trying to tell jokes, you know. Yeah. I, I th first off, I think that's a, such a excellent point on when people ask did that actually happen or not you should feel so proud i know you do but to everybody out there if you're an aspiring comedian or um even experience you should be proud that you were able to use your brain to make something of it of, of a little source of truth and then and then put some details on it that are hilarious so i right. think that's such an excellent point and uh you, you know it is it, i i also do love comedy where it's not there's not any like deep story or deep lesson behind it. And I almost think as you were saying it, cause when I first, I saw the caption on your Instagram page of the pronouns and I was like, Oh man, where's he going to go with this? And so yeah. I was I like, that. I enjoy that though. That, that I, I, I mean, Mark Norman, he always points that out with like my bits. He's always like, man, like we, like it's, we never know. Like it's tough to us to see where you're going. Like we, you know, like you do a, yeah. I do a good job of not, not, you know hiding the, the football not letting people see where where i'm going like because yes. even on my on on i always try like on my most serious topics i always try like to end it as silly as i can so it's always <laughs> you know i'm always trying to like i always want to do the gotcha like you thought i was going to tell you you know you should allow gender you know no i'm just, i'm telling jokes here and it's also true it's like my gender pronoun joke it's true like i really feel like yeah. if you know i've talked about in new york nobody cares about what you want to be called like we'll call you that if you want me to call you he she they whatever it's not a big deal yeah. like i also feel yeah. that way. that's important to me too i try not to write yeah. jokes i don't feel that way yeah yeah no that's excellent i was we're gonna get into the advice portion ian but it's been awesome so far i was gonna ask you one more question too i know that on entry notes you had spoken about in college because i think the day after college was when you started comedy but in college Oh, a couple of days. Sorry, sorry. I'm I'm like really good at almost getting the detail right. It's kind of like stepping. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh man. Close. Yeah, just so close. But right. I was gonna say, I know you were talking about how you wanted to be a motivational speaker before yeah. and while you were in college. And first off, I think one of the really cool things about you and and your stand up is your voice. I could definitely see you being a motivational speaker and why I think it's a strength to your comedy as well is I'm hanging on every word as you're speaking. I mean, even in this podcast, I'm like, what's he gonna say? But on the comedy, and I love how you make those, you almost, you're holding the football, you don't know where, you're not showing people where you're gonna go with your jokes. And so that almost adds up this little, not tenseness, but they're, they're captivated and then your voice keeps it going. And so uh, I was gonna ask, did you really, I know in, in, um, on the HBO special, you had said, oh, kind of just brushed it off, tongue in yeah. cheek. I didn't really want to do it, or it was an easy job, but did, did you really want to do that? And then did the motivational speaking, did that help you with the constant grind of like 30 to 40 shows a week? And then just, I don't know, eight and a half years doing this every day. Yeah. Um, that, that was a thing after college, I actually that was a thing that I was, I don't know if I ever really thought about doing it myself, 
but I was gotcha. always kind of I was always kind of fascinated by it. I remember after college, there was a phase where like motivational speakers were like very very in like they had the Gary Vayner truck or whatever and all of them like <laughs> they started making Instagrams and I always thought about that such a I, I just thought that was funny I'm like I just thought <laughs> like that's such an like, like it's it seems obviously I know it's not I'm, I'm telling a joke so I know it's not as easy as I'm putting it but yeah. the, the thought of like <laughs> you're literally just telling somebody that you could do whatever you think you could do <laughs> and, and then you don't tell him how like that's like Gary Vaynerchuk like you'll go up to him and you'll be like I'm trying to start a company and he'll be like quit your job move out of your parents house and go start your company and you're like <laughs> are you gonna get help me at all and he's like no I got go. <laughs> I know and then he's just like it's simple dude that's all you got to do quit your job leave your family if you have to and right. then uh be just start a business three and a half years. you'll be good and, and then you're like all right. Thank, thank you, Gary. <laughs> thank you, Gary. <laughs> and Gary just walks off with like to his mansion, his helicopter that takes him to the mansion. <laughs> I always thought that was a funny. I always thought that was such a funny uh, thing that idea. And then, yeah. uh, and then I had that idea. And then I, I, I was working with that idea for a little while. And then it just hit me. I was like, but wait a minute. Like, my parents. I couldn't tell my parents that. Like. That I, like, yeah. how silly is that to come home and tell your parents, I want to be a motivational speaker, especially when your parents are immigrants. They're going to be like, what? Like, there's no motivational speakers where we come from. Like, everyone's just motivated. Like, we need to <laughs> well, that was like the whole idea of, 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 of that joke. But like I said, these jokes, like, you know, they, they take a lot of development, like, to get to where they are. Like, they, they mm -hmm. that joke had a, a, another extension. I ended up taking it out. It was about, uh, like, I, I took it to another job. I forgot how I got there, but I was like, um, something about being a food critic. I was like, I had a friend who wanted to be a food critic. And I was like, you can't be a food critic from if you come from the hood. Like, there's, no, there's nobody, there's no, <laughs> no kids aspiring to be food critics in the hood. Like, you can't be like, I trained at the best Burger Kings and McDonald's all across the Bronx. That, that doesn't work. I, I had to that out for the special, but yeah. Oh, nice. That's hilarious. Well, Ian, thank you so much. We're going to get into the advice portion of the podcast, answer a couple questions before we Are dive into that. Me advice? Because I, <laughs> or I give wait, them advice. We're going to give them advice. Oh, okay. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Get I, I don't. Lives, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. Um, so before we get into it, the, I want to have an uh, inspirational quote to help inspire us to be able to answer these questions. But before I get into mine, I like to ask my guests, do you have any inspirational quotes that help get you through your dark days and through those troubling times? Um, I don't, I don't think I have any specific uh, quotes. Um, Cause like I said, like, and this is like not a joke, like my family, like we don't like need that. Like they're just like, get up and do the shit. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Inspiration? Like, you need inspiration? My dad's like, I came here as an immigrant. I didn't even learn the language. How's that for inspiration? You know? <laughs> like, that's how I was raised. I wasn't raised with like, like, you know, there's no type of mental, mental care in my family. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it, it's so, I feel like there's a lot of exploration in that. I feel like you tapped the comedy vein in that idea too, because it's like, only, I mean, fucking America and other countries, maybe first world countries where we're like, oh, I need somebody to inspire me, somebody to talk to me and be like, you can do it. They don't tell you, like you said, any details on how to do it, but they're like, yeah. you are special. And then, I don't know, maybe it motivates you. Maybe it makes you feel good for an hour until. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's, it's but... crazy. So yeah, so uh, um, I actually, the the one, I mean, not necessarily but the one i use for the joke is if you don't build your dream somebody's gonna hire you to help them build theirs but yeah i'm really i'm really like i i try to make a point like whenever i because i have like younger like i have nieces and nephews and younger cousins and i have ones who are like just reaching that you know 18 20 year old but they're trying to figure out what to do and they have these passions that they don't know if they should pursue or whatnot yeah. i always kind of try to tell people like you could figure it out, man. Like, like not yeah. to say that I've figured it out because you know I haven't, but like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm doing okay. Like I'm, I'm 30 yeah. years old. I did stand up my entire 20s. I went from literally, uh, you know, 
a nobody who nobody knew who you know i didn't know anything about stand-up i didn't have any comedians in my family i did the work mm -hmm. i researched it i found out how you did it you know and not to say that i'm anything because i'm not i'm just a, you know i'm just a regular comedian but like i still have you know my work is out there i have people that know me yeah. that I've never you know i have i have over 20 million views on, on my stuff like if you add them yeah. all together like that's insane yeah. i'm just some kid from queens that decided to hey i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna figure so like whatever passion people have i'm always like figure it out just do it do the thing whatever you want to do do the thing like it's not easy i don't know how i had to figure you know i'm trying to figure out how it is for me like you have to figure out how it is for you but you could do it dude i love that that's like a new that's just like the just do it but like new york city eyes yeah. right do, right. do the thing to say, it's very easy to say from new york because you literally can do it if you live in south dakota and you're like i'm gonna be an actress it's like well hold on listen uh you're gonna have to leave south dakota <laughs> We you know, can we can put an asterisk on it yeah, and then be yeah. like, if you don't live in New York, you gotta leave where you are. <laughs> yeah, you know. come to New York and then you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, awesome. So that's a great quote. We're gonna see about my quote. I actually, it's not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot, and it's called Inspirobot. So what its main purpose in life is is well, I don't know if it's alive, but it takes AI and it takes some of the wisest words known to man. And then just violently mashes it together for an inspirational quote. Now, we're going to try and decipher it to see what it means. <clears throat> this quote, this week from InspireBot, it says, Sometimes the most compassionate thing to do is to refuse to shut up. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> like our president's motto. <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh, that yeah, that's very true. I think uh, Trump might be reading Inspirobot over here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh god, the most compassionate thing to do is to refuse to shut up. That's a, that's heavy. That's I like it. I, I I get it. I like it. I think in the, put in the wrong hands is very dangerous, though. <laughs> that that is that very dangerous. in the wrong person's hands. Very dangerous. <laughs> But I like it. <laughs> that is a good point. All right. Well, good job, InspireBot. I think we're inspired now. We're going to answer a couple questions. This first one comes from our fan, Becca. Thank you, Becca. She found it on Reddit. It says, what's a gift I can give to my landlord to show our appreciation for them? So my older landlord, who has given us a space to live, has been through a lot over the last several months. They have been taking on a lot more responsibility, and we feel they really deserve a great Christmas gift. Since we are not going to see our families this year due to COVID, we want to give a bigger gift to them. I'm curious to know what's a great present for them. I would love some ideas. Thanks. You want to know what's a good present for your landlord? The rent. And that's it. <laughs> you don't give present to your landlord. I don't know where city or state that she's writing from. But we don't do that in New York. There's no presents being given out to your landlord. They're lucky to get a Merry Christmas. We hate Fuck. our landlords. That's what that's what we're trained. You're trained to hate your landlord here. Dude, that's yeah, I was thinking the same exact thing because I even in Phoenix in Arizona here, I don't think there are much people that are showing appreciation for their landlords. That's just like a common enemy amongst yeah. everyone. It's like taxes suck and landlords suck. Right. Those are just and they two... get it. They're like, I know you hate me, but you owe me, so pay me. Like they understand. <laughs> landlords understand. She's like, he's been so nice, he lets us live here, and you give him two thousand dollars a month to allow you to live there. Like, you're fine. You don't have to buy yeah. him anything. Yeah, you don't need to give them a set of C's candies. I mean, fuck, dude, just the rent. Maybe, maybe tops. Put the rent in an envelope with a Christmas bow and say, right, Merry don't Christmas. throw it at the door like usually. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the bow and launch it at his front door. <laughs> give a gent gentle sl slide under the door or something. Merry yeah. Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good advice, I think. We've got. This next and last question, it's from our fan, Will. He found it on Reddit. It says, how can me and my girlfriend, girlfriend? How can me and my girlfriend sleep in my car more comfortably? I have a Honda Civic 2017 with the hatchback. So it's pretty spacey, but how would you and someone else lay up in the car? We tried to last night and I was an uncomfortable ASF. So Ian, have you ever tried to sleep in a car? No, is I don't understand. Is this person try, like this? Sounds like does it does it say where the person is from? 
It doesn't, but I'm imagining it's because he doesn't North. sound homeless. This sounds like um, some white guy that's like like rich, but he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to live how the other side lives and sleep in my <laughs> Honda Civic today. <laughs> You know, it doesn't sound like he has a 2017 Honda Civic. That's pretty good. Like, I don't think he's homeless. I think he's just trying to live that life. And, and it's not necessary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds almost like a humble brag here. He's not even trying. Yeah, he's like, like so I've got a 2017 Honda Civic hatchback. hatchback don't mean twin that. turbo, but we can't sleep. <laughs> oh, God. Souped up except for the Honda. bed function. <laughs> yeah, he's a little Honda. Like, listen, the gas mileage is great, but I can't fucking get rest in here. <laughs> i think you're right i mean if you it does sound like you don't need to sleep in your car maybe don't you're on a road trip that is very dangerous i have to say that we're joking don't sleep in your car it is dangerous you could you could die and i don't want you know i get snl next year they pull up this podcast here's ian telling people to sleep in their car this couple died in in idaho i'm like don't sleep in your car <laughs> that i'm glad you put that disclaimer that is important <laughs> But if you were to sleep in your car, I, I, I would say, I would say pillows. Cause I think I, I don't think I've ever slept in my car per se, but I have been on some road trips. And if you line up yeah. yeah, with pillows, I think yeah. that could make for a comfortable experience or at least sleepable. Oh. Yeah. No, listen, if you got to do it, I mean, it's a hatchback. There's not much, there's not much, you don't have much things you could do. You know, it's not like he's asking you about a suburban where you have rows. It's only one way to sleep. You put the seat back, lay some pillows. That's it. He's not getting that's something true. to work with. If it, yeah, that's true. And you know what? That's your fault. Cause when you're going to this car dealer and you're asking about the mileage and the tires and everything, yeah. you should have been like, how does one sleep in the car? Is that right. good? And then they'll like, be like, Oh, not only just a car, but a home. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I was going to spring for the two, 2015, but the 2017, instead of paying rent on my house, uh, my very nice landlord, I'm actually just going to pay for the car. So, <laughs> oh, God. Well, good. Good luck, Reddit. Um, Ian, we've reached the end of the podcast. So, it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, I just wanted to say, huge thank you for having you or for for jumping on sharing your advice and sharing some advice that we're putting a disclaimer you should not follow right you should not follow thank you for having me man this was fun i you know i love i'm a i'm a comedy uh nerd comedy junkie so i love talking comedy uh especially when uh when they're gonna compliment you for 45 minutes so i appreciate you having me on <laughs> <laughs> dude i mean you are ever and especially comics man i mean you are an absolutely incredible comic and i feel like comics get re rejection i'll put in quotes so oh, much from hitting scary. hitting mics or hitting shows where the crowd sucks or they just get and then people are they have i think you had highlighted this on people with comments and stuff but people live they might just boo you or just say you suck or something so i feel like everyone needs a little love every now and then oh, but especially sure. comics and especially good ones like you sure, great ones like you i appreciate it people have no idea how much rejection it is like it's just even at like a high level of achievement it's still constant rejection like it's still just constant rejection you kind of just have to be like when you get to the point where you're like all right, I guess whatever. You know, you just become whatever yeah. to it. You know, yeah. Work, yeah. Whatever to it. Like, you know. And you it's, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's one of the things too, I feel like where when you, when people see it, they're just unaware of all the work that goes into it. Like you were talking about writing, that we just talked about the shows. And then when people see the show with the very refined material, they're like, oh, they just made that up the top of their head or they just telling a story. And it's like, no. Lots of work goes into this beautiful art and craft of, right. of And comedy. listen, I also don't want to sound like I'm trying to make it like, I don't think that the people, I don't care that the people don't, like, not that I don't care, but I understand why the people think that. Like, when I go out to eat at a restaurant, if it's a nice restaurant, I don't stop to think about how long the chef trained to be as good as he is to do what he's doing out. I just want to eat the good food. And then I'll have it and I'll be like, this was good. And that's it. Like, I don't really give too much thought to that. So I understand why they don't do that to comedy. But I will say in the, like comedy is a thing where like in the back of my mind, I know the chef is well trained. Like I know that even right. though I don't think about it, I know that. But with comedy, people tend to believe that like 
everyone, people think that they can just start comedy and then just do a special. Like I see it now, like people are doing comedy yeah. one year and they're like releasing my first album. And I'm like, whoa, like that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Now, no offense to the people who did it, but I'm like, you're going to regret that. Yeah. Yeah. I just imagined I was, my head was stuck in that restaurant um, picture. And I was thinking of going to the chef and being like, that was great. But you know what? I have some suggestions for the first oh, course. The fettuccine other- Alfredo is okay. But if you want to top it off with a little extra salt, I feel like that would be better. People do yeah. that too all the time. You know that people come up to you after the yeah. show, like, Hey, what well, you should do this. And it's like, I'm, I'm a professional comedian. <laughs> Oh God, dude. God. But, but anyway, thank you for coming on. I also wanted to ask, what have you got going on? Where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Um, um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at my name is Ian Lara, I A N L A R A live L I V E Ian Lara live. I'm on Instagram and on Twitter as that, uh, if you go on YouTube and just put my name, Ian Lara, all of my comedy central stuff is up there. My tonight show set is up there. My, uh, Fallon set, and if you have HBO Max, you can search LA Meets New York. That's the name of the special. Just came out on Friday. LA Meets New York. Uh, HBO Max is out right now. Dope special. It's short. Me and another comic. We both do 15 minutes. It's quick to the point. You know, it's not like one of these long drawn out uh, things. So watch it. Check it out. And I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned. I mean, hopefully when we get back open, we get back to work. But I have stuff uh, hopefully coming. Hell yeah, dude. Well, that's awesome. And all of that's going to be in the show notes. So listeners, you can just click on there and uh, appreciate the, the comedy. So, so please support Ian, follow him on Instagram, watch his, his I was almost going to say watch his shit, but watch his beautiful watch gem. Of- shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh man. But anyway, um, if you want to stay on for like five seconds after I say goodbye to the audience, Ian I can give you some post app right. details, but Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening and we will talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Ian, you can say goodbye too. Oh, I'm sorry. Later guys. I thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding.